what's really going on. That letter to Congressman Devin Nunes renews the request by FBI, FBI Director Chris Wray that the chairman share the memo with the Justice Department for review, either to them or the FBI's Inspector General, since they are unaware of the wrongdoing it alleges and would like to investigate first. The letter states it would be extraordinarily reckless to release cl a classified memo, which has been urged by the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., as well as Russian bots, according to the German Marshall Fund, a group that tracks their activity. So Don Jr. and Russian bots want, and obviously this means the Russian intelligence services, yeah. want us to release a highly classified memo. And Republicans, Devin Nunes, the head of the Intel Committee, which, by the way, Paul Ryan is the person who put them there, put him there. Paul Ryan is the person who is responsible for absolutely everything that Devin Nunes does. Paul Ryan. So, so NBC News reports that Nunes has resisted sharing the memo even with the Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Richard Burr. And last night on MSNBC's All In, ranking Democrat Adam Schiff described how the letter revealed to him how little the House Intelligence Committee's Republican members care about was what is actually in the document. What was so astounding to me, Chris, about the FBI and DOJ letter is it reveals for the first time Chairman Nunes didn't even read the underlying materials. After making all this fuss and claiming all this conspiracy, he didn't even bother to take the time to read the materials that he was characterizing in this memo. The only two members that have read the underlying materials are myself and Trey Gowdy. Uh, and bear in mind, uh, Mr. Gowdy is the same one who brought us those endless Benghazi conspiracy theories, none of which ultimately proved to be true. Uh, so when I moved in the committee, at the time the Republicans voted to provide this flawed document to the House, I made a motion to allow the members to read the underlying materials before they voted on characterizing them in such a distorted fashion. They voted that down. I moved to let the whoa, FBI wait, wait and the Department of Justice. They, wait, wait, wait a second. They chose to not allow to read the actual underlying materials that are issue that provide the ingredients for the memo. They actively chose to not read that stuff. That's exactly right. And to a person, the Republican members voted against allowing themselves to read the underlying materials that they were <laughs> characterizing. So, okay. so Chris, Chris, everything's upside down now. You have, you have evangelical leaders uh, basically saying, we don't care what a president does. The same ones that were skewering Bill Clinton are now perfectly fine with everything that Donald Trump does. Um, and now you have Republicans, conservatives supposedly, people who claim to be conservative, constantly attacking our intel agencies. This is what we used to attack liberals for doing with the church commission and, you know, constantly going after the CIA, constantly attacking the integrity of the FBI. It seems like everything's reversed these days. Well, I don't think anyone should be immune from criticism because they wear a uniform, because they're in uh, a sector of our government that, that deserves respect. Doesn't mean you should be shielded from criticism. If something bad is going on and there is evidence of it, then by all means, criticize the FBI. But when I read that text, I'm a believer that sometimes the simplest explanation is usually the right one. To me, that reads people setting up a couple frustrated folks getting drinks. It could be something more than that. It might not be. But to sow the seeds of conspiracy theory without knowing more, is this just a couple people wanting to grab beers and vent frustration over their personal feelings about the election? Or is it something more? If we don't really know that, then why go stir people up with that information? With that said, it, it, I don't think that it means we shouldn't be looking into things. I don't think anyone should be immune from criticism and scrutiny. I just think if you're going to criticize, you should have solid evidence that it's deserved. Sam Stein, jump in. Try not to insult anyone. <sighs> I will not insult anyone. Uh, what's, what's interesting to me is that um, this is not the first time that Devin Nunez has done something like this. You would have thought his credibility would have been burnt with the infamous unmasking scandal that happened uh, right. earlier this year. And in fact, he actually had to keep his distance from the investigation. By, by, by the he, way, he Sam, let's us. remind people that he held a press conference outside the Intel Committee. He said, I am going to take information to the White House yes. that is disturbing. And then he got to the White House, had no information, 
and was then given information from the White House, and then went back out. Presented it to presented it to the president, it, acted yeah. as if it was revelatory. In fact, Chairman Burr of the Senate accused him subsequently of just concocting an entire scandal. And you would think in normal times that after that your credibility would be irrevocably burned and no one would trust you again. But we live in interesting times. And I would encourage viewers uh, just for a few minutes at night to turn on Fox News to understand why this stuff persists. Because mm -hmm. if you watch Fox News in the evening lineup, they are having an entirely different conversation that is relatively devoid of any logical underpinning. It's in that neck, it's in that ether that we have things like a secret society that gets credence. Uh, every night there are new questions about the veracity and legitimacy of the Robert Mueller investigation. Like, what, and this what, what is just did, ramping what did, what did up Lou and Dobbs up and up. Say, what did Lou Dobbs call, say I a couple days it. ago? Something about deep state people and yada, yada, oh, yada. Oh, yes. oh the, got, but we have to go to war with the FBI. Yes. yes. It and is time to go to war with the FBI. And so if that's people why, are... Yeah. That is, that's, go to war with the men and women who protect Americans from terror attacks. They're on the front line. That would be like us saying domestically... They're on the front line. That would be like us saying, we have to go to war with the United States Marine Corps. But imagine, imagine like a good chunk of the populace is getting this message, maybe not to that extreme, but it's getting this message every single night. And it's only ramping up as Mueller's investigation winds down. And so that explains a lot of this. There's a huge chunk of our population who's just utterly convinced that the deep state is out to get Donald Trump. And it's not bound to anything. It's bound to weird conspiracy theories that are floated by Ron Johnson, so, so is, but it's there. So let me ask, is this, is this why Donald Trump, is there a method to the madness? Is this why Donald Trump has been attacking Let's. nonstop the intel community, even before he got into office, and the media from the very beginning because he knew that this was coming. So off of that, Joe, off of your observation and off of what David Ignatius uh, just indicated, uh, over the past couple of days I've talked to four different people, uh, two from the Intelligence Committee, two from the FBI, formerly from, from the FBI, and each of them have a similar strain of thought on what's going on, and it is this that a lot of what we read, a lot of what we end up talking about on cable TV, about these daily headlines that we get, these daily stories, it seems every day we get two or three different eye-popping stories out mm -hmm. of Washington. There's an element of distraction to all of them because at the root of this is an astounding fact according to these intel people and the former FBI people, and it is this, that at the root of this is Russia's role in manipulating an election in the United States of America. Russia, not our friend, not our ally, Russia, still here, still actively pursuing disruption in our political system, and politicians from the president on down say nothing yep. about it. Playing each right and every into day. it. The answer to your question is, of course, of course, the reason he goes after the intel agencies and the media is to soften the ground for whatever's coming. He suspects something is coming, and he does not want you to trust the source, whether it comes from the media or now even the FBI. And I would point out it was, what, a year ago, a little more than a year ago, that the shoe was totally on the other foot, that it was Democrats who didn't like the FBI because Comey put out the memo that right. they believe cost Hillary Clinton the election, how quickly these things change. But, yeah, of course, that's what Donald Trump's doing. He doesn't want people to believe their own eyes when Mueller presents his findings. And, Chris, this chaos, one of the reasons why millennials are breaking away from the Republicans as quickly as they are. And I can't believe Ron Johnson and Devin Nunes or any of these people making jackasses of themselves on TV are going to make millennial voters any more likely to say, hey, I think I'm going to vote feel Republican trust this here. Fall. Yeah, I don't feel like this discussion is particularly relevant to most of their lives or the things that inspire them or want to engage them in politics. It doesn't mean that it's not important to investigate this issue, but it, it's certainly not the sort of thing that people are going to be drawn to the Republican what, what, Party. What, is, what, what issue specifically needs to be investigated? Well, no, I, I just mean the idea of, of holding folks accountable. If right. it turns out that we as a country 
country decide that it is completely inappropriate for folks within the FBI to have personal political views, whether they are in favor of or opposed to the president, and we decide that's a really big deal, and we're going to we're going to say you cannot be involved at all in an investigation if you have any personal views. If that's the standard we're going to set, and that seems to be the standard that Republicans no, in Congress no, want to but set, but that's an impossible standard. We would I have agree to have that's an robots. Standard. I agree and, that's an impossible and, and, standard. And, and I mean, this is something we've known forever. I, you know, half the half the CIA went after George W. Bush. Uh, over WMDs. Uh, half the CIA was outraged that Barack Obama weighed in on the Hillary investigation. I mean, people have And I think what should matter is, opinions. is it affecting their work? Exactly. And to the extent that in this memo there's any evidence that suggests that there are folks who are not doing their job effectively, then as Christopher Ray said, please give me that information so I can right. act on it. But I, I, to your question about millennials, I don't think that this is the sort of issue that is drawing them to the Republican Party. But David Ignatius, is there any evidence is there a shred of evidence? Have you seen, and this is your beat as much as anybody's in the world, have you seen any evidence inside the intel community or outside the intel community that Bob Mueller or any of his investigators' personal political beliefs have impacted any part of this investigation? I, I have not. The strange thing is that a lot of this debate, a Republican uh, series of attacks, involves behavior at a time when what the FBI was doing was putting out information about Hillary Clinton at, at the, her most vulnerable moment at the end of the election campaign and not putting out information about their investigation of Donald Trump. I mean, it's, it really stands uh, what, 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 what happened on the end. But, but Joe and, and Mika, you, you would be wrong if you didn't think this is, this is penetrating it's not it's not just Fox News I collected the four top headlines four most read pieces on real clear politics last I hear the hear the headlines evidence suggests a massive scandal is brewing at the FBI that's one no choice but to appoint a special second counsel that's the second most read the FBI is looking guilty as hell in the Russia probe that's the third fourth is the stench at Obama's dust Justice Department <coughs> and FBI that's what the country is reading right now by a very deliberate effort, I, as you said, to distract. The next round that plays is Mueller's actual uh, conversation with Trump. That's where, we, that's where we'll be in another week or two. But I, I do think this is, we're, we're seeing the fog machine uh, working full blast, and it's obviously having an effect. Well, and it shows that Just Fox News and also the Russians uh, continued attempts to impact social media, according to this re most recent study, the Russian bots is working. 43% of Americans uh, approve of Bob Mueller's investigation, 35% disapprove, but look at the Repub... Oh, that's independence. Uh, 68 Democrats, 20 uh, disapprove, uh, but then look at Republicans, 26, 49. Uh, they, they are, they're creating an echo chamber, they're creating an alternate reality. And they have changed in the past two years dramatically. That network is it's a very different network. Yeah. It's, yeah, I better just leave it there. Dramatic change. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.